love for his adopted puppy has turned into a $22 million a year online business. This is Marshall Morris, and this is exactly how he did it. Hey, hello, Mondo. Hello, hello. All right, Marshall, tell me more about your business, your iHeart Dogs, right? It's a pretty cool name. I like it, really catchy. Um, what'd you start? How'd you start? Tell us the story. We started about 10 years ago. And actually, Justin, uh, our partner, had rescued a, a husky, a Siberian husky, and uh, had posted it online, like we all do. You know, here's yeah. your dog photo. Well, it just went viral. Wow. And then people were like, oh, I love dogs too. I love that. And then they're like, here's my dog, you know, all this thing. And so we started saying, that's cool. Let's build a Facebook page around it, right? Uh -huh. And then it just w completely blew up. Like, no way. And we just started serving audiences. Like, we would we'd ask them, hey, what are you looking for? Where do you have your problems? I mean, what would you like to see in a product? Like, in, and people would say, hey, this is my favorite toy. This is why. Or have problem with this and so from that point we start taking those data points and then just started making it uh, and then because we had people who already invested it in the business itself in the products yeah right when they came out they were ready to buy it so they would buy it we learn and then we just keep expanding that oh, that's cool all right so what were your guys's total startup cost when you first started and if someone's watching this and they're like hey i want to start this thing today too so what would you advise that they would budget for 10 years ago our, our biggest cost was really just uh a little bit of advertising to kind of build our audience like we didn't have this great business idea we just knew that we wanted to serve an audience that cared about pets that cared about giving back and uh, we started building that specifically on facebook so we ran facebook ads to build that audience and began to kind of organically get traction we started getting emails and um, really probably six months down the road is when we actually started monetizing um, that audience but it really just began with building an audience around a passion all right Marshall where are we we're in our warehouse in Anaheim California where we send 5,000 packages a day and in 15,000 square feet I love it so if somebody wants to start their business today um, where do they get the financing where do you guys get your financing well, we started it from a dollar and turned it into another dollar. Um, I think right now there's a couple ways. One's friends and family, uh -huh. that's a great place. But right now we live in a creator world where people are willing to put money behind and support someone. So mm. one of the ways that we always tell people is build it first and maybe get an audience to fund it for you. Like, here's the concept, hey guys, do you want it? Oh, that's good. Jump on board, yeah. let's do it. Because that way you actually have people committed to the product and you. And that's gonna give you a really good beacon as to how the market's gonna to respond to it. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the best ways. And right now it's the best timing with TikTok. You have one TikTok, there's your business. So cool. uh, that's one of the best ways today, I think. I love it. So how many hours are you working today versus when you first started? I would say there was 70, 80 hour weeks. Okay. It's definitely different now for me. Um, we have an amazing team and, and fortunately uh, that's not required anymore. But sacrifice, you know, it's, it's, it's required in the beginning. And um, we were both working other jobs when we started. So there was kind of a little bit of both. Yeah. And by the way, that's another way I think to, to fund a, a new business is that you can, you don't have to quit all at once, right? You can have an income source as you, as you, you know, build something in the side and I think that Sorry. that is something that um, that we've done and we've seen a lot of people do successfully what are the key pieces for your user acquisition uh, systems yeah so we're, we're looking to build products that are eye-catching viral something that, that reaches out and grabs you on a social media feed and when you see that product and you can't resist it and it's at the right price you come in you connect with I heard dogs at that point we have other products like in this room we have our supplements okay. and these are products that people buy long term um, they stay on auto ship and they support our business but we bring them in through acquisition sometimes with you know a magnet a sticker uh, a mug a t-shirt we'll bring them in any way that connects them with uh, us and what they love and then we'll develop a long-term rela relationship with them again generosity right yeah and you guys are always doing the extra mile and that's a that's a big one too is that um, uh, we lead with uh, we lead with the charity campaign uh, most of the time and we say look here's exactly what we're doing with your purchase this is going to feed a dog or this particular product is going to help fly a dog you know out of a kill shelter to safety so we lead with the cause um, and that's how we really get most of our repeat business is you know is showing people the impact and then giving them the proof too, showing them the film of us on the ground yeah. with the dogs here delivering the food you know um, really showing them that that what they do matters so and you guys are always come up coming up with new ideas mm -hmm. how do you get those ideas is it one, just trial and error kind of a deal or were you guys like hey i think this is the new thing on the market let's push this so like one thing we follow human trends it used to be that human trends followed pet market four to five years it's actually like four to five months now wow because of tiktok you yeah. know it's quick so we'll uh and products take longer to develop a lot of times so we'll follow human trends we'll look at actually where the market is who's selling what mm -hmm. do we feel like we can support that and then also can we do something generous with it so That's does awesome. it does it fit in our line so we're always doing product we probably develop 
I mean, uh, I would say probably 50 to 100 products a year. Mm. Um, and we deploy probably, I mean, if you average it out, probably a product every week or two weeks gets rolled out. And so like for us, our team is just doing development all the time. Um, I think you have to be in this world because like yeah. you don't know what's going to sell, what's going to stop, you know, all these things. Mm -hmm. So if you want to continue to grow, you got to be thinking like, what's the next thing? Also, the community will qualify stuff. So we'll ask them like, would you buy this? Oh, Do you want is. this? Do you use it? So um, our community really validates a lot of our stuff. So we we have our, our failure rates really low uh, because of that. And that's kind of speaks to the why we always tell our people, build the community, build the community, build the community. I love it. You guys are so dialed into the community. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right, so where are we at, boys? So we're in our warehouse right here. This is where we pick all of our orders. You know, we sometimes uh, ship up to 5,000 orders a day out of here. Um, products all over the place, uh, always always growing. Always, uh, This is our, what, our fourth warehouse. Uh, so, you know, we keep kind of bursting at the seams. Um, we have an amazing team here, though. Um, they do a great job serving our customers, shipping quickly and, and everything. You said 5,000 products a day? To 5,000 orders in a day. Wow, we've shipped orders. before, yeah. My goodness, yep. wow. So what was the hardest thing of starting your business when you, when you first started off? Um, I would say from a warehouse perspective, like I remember telling myself like, you can do this, you can do this. We were at a 3PL, which is a third party where they were fulfilling it and then they broke up with us. Like, hey, you're doing too much volume. No way. And like, and this is the middle of selling, like you can't stop selling. That thing is possible? Yeah, that's possible. <laughs> wow. And so, uh, but they were nice about it. So I'll just say that, like they were like, hey, just not working, yeah. you know? So we, we, we got off the phone and I think in the next week we had signed a lease on a, on a building. We had no idea how to build it. We had no idea how to put rack, like racking in, uh -huh. no clue. So I think the really the lesson there, which I tell people is you, sometimes you just got to jump and build the parachute in the air. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's kind of became our motto. We eat challenges for breakfast. That's our, yeah. that's our team says <laughs> that's our thing. Yeah. So like if, if there's a way to figure it out, we're going to figure it out. Yeah. You guys be sure to keep watching because Marshall's going to share with us how he thought he made a hundred thousand dollars one day, but then lost 300,000 the next. So keep watching to avoid these costly mistakes. What is your revenue in an average month? So um, it, it varies depending on seasons. We average about $2 million a month. At the end of this year, we're projected to do about $25 million. That is incredible. And what's the margin profits? Uh, so the profit margins, we shoot for a, a 20% uh, net profit margin. That's incredible. And what are your greatest expenses today? Biggest expenses are going to be uh, people and then marketing. Mm -hmm. And so marketing is the one that is the hardest because Costs tend to always rise, yeah. um, so you got to get really creative. And so I think this next season for us and everyone else, people who are the most creative are going to win. How long were you in your business before it became profitable, and how much money did you make your first year? I think the first year that we really were like, oh wow, this is something. Was that we did about two million dollars in revenue, mm -hmm. and it was like, oh shoot, like we got something here. Like there's something, there's that something is here. Cool. Yeah, so that was pretty exciting because then it's like, okay, now where are we, where do we go next? You yeah. know, and a lot of it was we had to relearn everything mm -hmm. we had been taught. You know, yeah. So it was really a learning process, and then getting really good people on the team. And you're constantly rebuilding. Sounds like. Yeah, that's how we roll, um, <laughs> because that's how you take advantage of opportunities. There you go. So we know we can figure it out, so we'll just jump and I love do it. it. How can someone start their own business today with no money or very little money? Any tips that you can offer? Yeah, I would say actually your time is valuable. That's how you're gonna start a business. I think online we have platforms where you can go online, you go to social media, you can kind of build an audience around a topic or a thing, you can manage a community, mm -hmm. you can launch a community. And so, and find people like yourself who like products or services. So I think if you're gonna start from zero, build a community first, that means literally launching social media and starting to build uh, relationships with people who are like you, who, who are like the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And then also join other groups online too because that's a really great place to connect with other people. Oh, that's good. So it could be Facebook groups, it could be Instagram uh, pages where the people are really active in the comments. Yeah. Uh, it could be YouTube communities, whatever, where they're around the same purpose or the same passion. And then you'll connect that way. And a lot of times out of that, you can kind of birth the next phase of like the business, which is starting to build a following, starting to build an understanding for what you're doing, learning what people are doing in that, that niche. Yeah. Uh, and then that way, when you go into product development, you're really informed on what people really want mm. versus what you think is like good. And early you mentioned how you thought you actually made $100,000, but in reality, you lost 300. Tell yeah. me more about that story. Yeah, I think online, you can spend, you can see sales come in yeah. um, and you can actually outspend the sales, meaning that you could spend more money in marketing than you actually make. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's one common problem a lot of entrepreneurs have is they'll start building businesses and say, oh, wow, I'm, sales are coming in and must make money. Yeah. That's not necessarily the case. Uh, there was a time where we were like, oh, so we're like so excited. We're like, yeah, we're selling product. It's awesome. And uh, we had accounting uh, came in we're like, hey, you made 100K last month. And um, we're like, dude, that's awesome. And then like a few days later, they're like, oh, I'm sorry. Like actually you lost 300,000. <laughs> oh uh, and we were, and that's one of those moments where your stomach just like, because you're like, all right. 
because like you're already past that and you're probably spinning into the next month the same clip yeah so um it was kind of like a moment but uh wow. so we had to figure out okay where is it going what, uh, whatever and i think for us that was when we really became we realized we need really good financial reporting mm -hmm. and so i think that i tell all the entrepreneurs i talk to is that like make sure you know your numbers mm -hmm. it's very easy to be like sales coming in and then like my bank account is about the same or something um that's not you're not gonna be able to scale that yeah. way when you're doing a couple hundred bucks that's one thing when you're doing a few million it's a whole different game mm -hmm. so um financial management is a key and so if you don't know how to do it learn it if you can't learn it find somebody who knows if you have that uh, in place yeah. uh, as you grow your business um, you're gonna be extremely way more successful um, and you're gonna avoid those moments where you're completely up, upside down yeah that's good that's a good tip so a lot of businesses they focus on profit which I think is important but you guys focus a lot on generosity. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is so important for your business? Business is one of the greatest tools to be able to change the world. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, because you actually have an engine that creates uh, economic reality for what you're doing and for the people that work for you. Mm -hmm. So um, for us, like we actually have a, a goal for revenue. We also have a goal for giving. Wow. Um, so for this year, we want to give over $2 million this year. And so, I yeah. love it. And uh, we've already hit 650000 And so wow. we're pretty excited about that. And we are, we're very public about it with our community. Like, hey, this is what we're doing together. Um, and they feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves. So uh, I think, I don't know if you, whether you believe in karma or God or whatever. Um, I feel like, we feel like sowing into the world being like, get, just pouring out just good stuff into the world oh, yeah. through your business. You're going to generate that back to you. Um, mm -hmm. It just happens. And so for us, being generosity focused is one of our core values. And for us, I think it makes a difference yeah. because most businesses, they, it's more transactional. Yep. Like, what can I get for you? Yeah. Uh, and, but when you're like, hey, what can I give you? Right. Uh, it just shifts people. Now, how has generosity helped you grow your business? I think it's tremendous. Like, it's one of those things you can't really measure as well, mm -hmm. but it is a powerful force. Mm -hmm. So when we're attracting people who are generous, they're gonna be generous with us, just like we're generous with them. It becomes a really fun business because people just love what you're doing and they're there to support you. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Your expertise in product launching is remarkable. Can you please share with us some of your insights of how you did that? Um, yeah, I think, again, we build that community, that's number one. We also make sure that we do an MVP of the product. So we'll work with our manufacturers to do a limited run. Mm. Uh, and that way our cost, is our investment in the product is low. So if there's a change or there's an issue of the product, we're not like sitting on th mil, you know, thousands and thousands of units. Yeah. So we do an MVP for every product first. Then we'll also do a pre-order. So like um, a lot of products will have a pre-order. It's like, hey, this is coming up, grab your slot in line. Or it might be something like we'll buy it but we know it's coming in three weeks, so we'll actually launch it for sale and say, hey, it'll ship in two weeks. Mm. So we'll do all these Good. things to test, because as soon as you put a product online and you're running ads, you're getting a feel for exactly how it's gonna move. Yeah. And that ultimately is the beacon of whether you need more or less. And so from a financial perspective, we look at like, we'd rather have too little uh -huh. uh, than way too much. No, that's good. What mistakes did you make early on in your business and, uh, did you, and how did you overcome them? Um, I mean, we made a lot of mistakes early on. We ordered the wrong product once. Um, it showed up and it was the wrong thing. We had our bank accounts hacked once where they stole like $60,000. No way. Uh, and they sent it to like 20 people. And the, it was a crazy thing. So wow. we've had all these crazy things happen. And so for us from, from day one, I think we just knew like, uh, we've just had that mindset. That mindset of just like, all right, adapt and overcome. Mm -hmm. We'll make it happen. Thank you, Stash, for sponsoring this section of the video. Stash is an online app that helps Americans like you to build your financial future $5 at a time. Whether you're a seasoned investor or just starting off, Stash makes investing in the stock market simple and accessible. Stash offers two affordable monthly plans at either $3 or $9 per month. Through the platform, you can buy a fractional share and own a piece of stock without owning the full share. Not only that, you can keep them in a retirement account or in a custodial account for your kids to look out after. Personally, I have experienced a number of investing apps, but Stash's easy to use interface is actually one of my most favorite. And they have a special offer for our viewers. You get a $25 bonus by downloading Stash and depositing as little as $5. Start building your wealth today with Stash. Click on the link in the description below or in the pinned comment to sign up today. Now back to the rest of the video. What are the best ways to convert leads into sales and what process do you guys have that, that's working for you guys? So I think any, any internet business is gonna have what they call top funnel. So we're gonna bring people in for something. Mm -hmm. um, usually it's, uh, it could be a newsletter, it could be a free product, it could be something. So you start with a relationship. Okay. Uh, and then you gotta manage that. So uh, that second part of that funnel is really like creating value. Yeah. You wanna create value before you ask for value. So it could be something like creating a newsletter that they actually wanna read mm -hmm. or something that really adds value to someone's life or giving them for us in the pet space tips on how 
how to uh, train their dog, right, themselves, or you know, how to uh, deal with an issue that they're having. Mm -hmm. um, and you're creating a ton of value, and there's this value vacuum that happens where if you create a ton of value first, then later on people are gonna lean in when you have an ask or you mm -hmm. have an opportunity for them. But it starts with creating value. You, too many people start early by just asking like buy this buy this buy yeah, this yeah. that's not how we buy mm -hmm. you know we don't like that yeah. it's like the car salesman tactic uh -huh. uh, you just want to create a ton of value and people will lean into your brand i like that what is the best way to grow an online business uh, i think if you're on a product or service facebook ads you can't beat it facebook started as the real, the real winner with letting you target customers that want your need your product yeah um so ultimately any business today there's no getting around it it's either going to be viral Mm -hmm. uh, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, which you can't control, yeah. but you can get lucky, or you're gonna run uh, paid ads, and so okay. paid Facebook. So if you're gonna launch a business, you wanna make sure the paid side of the business works. You can do viral stuff all day long, mm -hmm. you just don't know when it's gonna hit, and so uh, that's awesome, yeah. but you, to build a long-term business, you gotta have paid working really well. So where do you guys find the best return on investment? For us, it's still Facebook and Instagram ads today, although we're seeing other platforms like TikTok come up and um, show promise. Uh, Google ads is still pretty good. We've done a little bit on Pinterest, but really um, Facebook is the driver still. Um, and, and a lot of businesses we've talked to, it's, it's still that way. We're, we create demand for our products. We're not just capturing the demand. So if you have a business in a very defined category where people are searching for it, great. Focus on search marketing, focus on Google. We're taking products that people haven't always even heard about and we're showing them concepts, ideas, Ideas that they love. So for us, pushing into a newsfeed type advertising product is the best uh, advertising source. Cool. Thank you. You dropped some good nuggets for us. All right, Marshall. So this is the Fan Blitz questions. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a set of questions and you try to answer them within 10 seconds or less. Okay. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. So now at this stage of success, what advice would you give to your teenage self? Work hard, chill out, and stay consistent. How would you feel about working for someone who knows less than you? It, it's difficult in some ways, but actually most of my team knows more than I do. In fact, Everyone here knows more than I do, so I'm already in that position. Yeah, um, it's just about connecting with people and um, like honoring some people's skills, you know, where they're strong, and then figure out how to fill in the gaps. Wonderful. What is the best part in being an entrepreneur? I think the ability to own your own time. That is like the ultimate. Uh, that's why people do what they do. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point is to be able to do life on your own terms, and so that's that's the best part. Love it. What is the worst part? The worst part of it probably is constant fires, and that's and like you have to be kind of in war, you have to have a, a, a kind of a war mindset sometimes because you can't control everything. There's times where it's just it gets really difficult, mm -hmm. um, and you just got to buckle up and make it happen. What would you tell your previous boss? Uh, thank you. Yeah, I learned a lot. He taught me a lot. Uh, all of them have, and so it's been it was always a great uh, time. So I would say thank you for just what you taught me and it helped me get to where I am. Tell me one thing about your business you would not want me to know. Um, I don't know if I have one. <laughs> we're, and the reason why is because we're like really public, yeah. so it's all on the table. So if we're having a problem, like like the team knows, because actually a lot of times they're the best problem solvers for it, you yeah. know? I, I would say that there really isn't one. I mean, we're, we're full kimono here, so I love it. you get it, you get what you get. Great job, Marshall. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have any regrets with your business? And if you had to do it all over again, what would you do differently? I think I, I regret that we, waited so long to start hiring. When I, if I knew the, the people that would come into our life to help us build this thing, yeah. we would have jumped in sooner and done it. So it was really scary at first, yeah. but ultimately we just figured it out, I, like I said, and there's systems and people that can help you. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and then once we did, we're like, all right, let's go. Cool, so, and you fun. guys have the funding to pay them? Yeah, we, we, we literally had to hire them based on what we were making, right? Wow. So it was like, do we have the money to fire someone or hire someone? It was uh, like, yes, we have the money. All right, let's go find that person. And I think that's how businesses work nowadays. A lot of times you can do, there's people who work fractional, meaning yeah. that you can hire someone who's like really good for part-time yeah. or quarter time, which is a huge asset. And the talent there has been incredible too. We have a lot of talent overseas. So I think that as an entrepreneur today, yeah. uh, you have a lot of options and you can really find what's the best fit for you and what you can afford. So don't sit on your couch, get, get working today. Yeah, get it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. How do you provide excellent customer service for an online business? We have a 99% satisfaction rating, wow. which I'm super proud of. Honestly, we just solve problems like we want them solved. So for example, somebody gets a product and they're like, don't want it, or say they want to return it, it's like, we just tell them to keep it. Like, just keep it, it's cool. Or donate to your local shelter or whatever. So we try to make the process frictionless. For us, it's really addressing it up front and just being, hey, look, we're gonna own what's ours and we're gonna solve it fast for you. So 
If you had an issue, we're gonna solve it. We call magic moments, or mm -hmm. those moments where we can really do something amazing. So like when someone has a dog pass away and will tell us because they're ordering, mm. um, we'll make sure that they get a card. We might send flowers, we might do things like that. We do five to 10 magic moments a week um, because we see so many dogs, but we've been part of their life the whole journey. That is so cool, man. So. You guys wait, go above and beyond for these customers. Yeah. So how do you guys source your products through your service online? So for us, you know, really, it really starts with a great product. So in our business, anything that's going to go inside of animal or consumable mm. is all made in the USA in the highest quality oh, human cool. formulated labs possible. Yeah. Um, and so there, we can find those online. It's easy to source that. Um, or we can look at what other people are using. Mm -hmm. uh, any other product we're building, like dog toys and things like that, we're looking for uh, who, where it's manufactured around the world. Mm. So again, it's research. We have a team that does that. It's actually a lot easier to source it than it was, say, 10 years ago. So how do you guys connect with new suppliers and also, how do you guys, what's your process for screening them to, you know, for all your new products going live? I would say it's not hard to connect with new suppliers or even to build products these days, but it is hard to build a strong relationship with a supplier where the product is quality and you can be confident in it. Mm. Anybody's willing to pop up and sell your product and slap your logo on it. Yeah. We really rely a lot on our team. Our product development team is very deep, very experienced, mm -hmm. and they have a lot of relationships with suppliers they've used over the years. So you really can't shortcut that. You really have to vet products. You have to, usually you don't know how good a supplier is until you work with them for a long time. So getting a referral is huge. Okay. Don't just go to Alibaba and pay the first supplier that comes up. Mm -hmm. okay. What aspect of your business that brings you guys the most joy or satisfaction? Yeah, uh, so much. I mean, obviously the give back is very rewarding to both of us. Um, you know, one of the things that I did not expect was how much I actually enjoy uh, working with people. We, when we built this business, we intended it being us, you know, in a, in, a, in a Starbucks working. And all of a sudden we have a team of over 70 people. Cool. And it's crazy because that's not what we planned or wanted, but it's what we needed. Yeah. And it's been great to see people grow um, and uh, learn from us, us to learn from them. So I think that's it's seeing people develop their skills over the years, staying with us for a long time. Um, and really just, it feels like a family. Uh, so cool. So what was that moment where you decided, hey, listen, I think we need to hire because things are getting way too much for us. But I think it was more of like, we really do need help. Like we were going crazy. My wife was like eight months pregnant doing customer service at Christmas. And like, <laughs> you know, we were just grabbing anybody we could oh, to fill man, holes, nice. you know? Yeah, there you go. Um, and then, and then basically then once we started hiring the right people, it was, it was just an incredible journey. It was like awesome. So we get to build really great products and a great company with uh, people we'd want to hang out with anyways. Like, yeah, we'll do that all day long. Oh, so cool. it was a really good run. Hey, I love it. Now this is a wrap and I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode, but before you go, check out our other interview with Vlad Cooks & Co, founder of Tagpup, who turned a dog collar business into the number one pet product shop on Etsy. Check it out. Until next time. <laughs>